So thank you, everybody, for joining. We really appreciate you joining our Sage Intelligence webcast. My name is Sandra Smith, and I am the Product Specialist for Sage Intelligence. And today, we're going to be talking about how to create a basic income statement and balance sheet using Sage Intelligence reporting. So thank you, everyone, for joining. And I do want to let everyone know just a few housekeeping items here that uh, we are recording this session, so you will receive a recording um, at the conclusion of the presentation here. Probably it could be um, either today or tomorrow you'll receive the re recording. And everyone is muted on the line. If you have any questions, please feel free to use the chat pane. I don't, I'm not always able to get to the answers. Um, I'll try to keep an eye on them, but I'm not, not always able to get to them during the presentation. However, I can certainly answer them at the very end of our presentation. I can answer them either one-on-one -on -one through the chat or where I can, I'll answer them during the presentation from a, uh, from a presentation standpoint if, they, uh, if they're uh, directed towards the audience. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and begin. Now, what, what I'd like to do is just talk a little bit about what is Sage Intelligence for those of you on the line that are, that are very new to this. So I want to explain what Sage Intelligence is, show you a few of our standard reports, and then we're going to get right in to taking a look at how to create a basic income statement and balance sheet using Sage Intelligence reporting. So Sage Intelligence really is a single investment for you. Sage Intelligence is a reporting tool that accesses all of your ERP modules and databases, as well as multiple company databases. So it can be a single tool to enable you to uh, be able to create reports both financially as well as operationally, all those operational reports. And we're going to be talking specifically about financial reports today, but you can do either with Sage Intelligence. Sage Intelligence is very easy to do your reporting and your analysis because we use Microsoft Excel as our front end. The Microsoft Excel, of course, is world well known. There's all kinds of information on how to use Microsoft Excel, and most of the globe is using Microsoft Excel for their reporting and analysis use uh, today. So we try to make it as easy as possible for you, for those of you who are using it. We also have um, the ability to um, take a look at, use, create, run uh, financial and operational reports from our predefined reports that are shipped with Sage Intelligence. So Sage Intelligence can not, not only connect to um, say your Sage ERP, but can also connect to other databases. And our predefined financial and operational reports will enable you to use, take a look at, review, and analyze your data, both from a financial perspective as well as those from, say, purchasing or inventory perspective. And our reports can, uh, we, the Sage Intelligence is shipped with the connection to your Sage ERP. And again, we can build uh, dashboards, balance sheets, income statements. So again, inventory and purchasing information from any of your uh, Sage ERP data, as well as databases from any of your other uh, applications, as long as they are ODBC, ODBC compliant. And for the most part, most databases are. So that is uh, where Sage Intelligence can enable you to look at your business and analyze your business data from across your entire organization. All right, this is just a, a view. I want to make sure everyone's screens are, are refreshed. This is a view of all of our standard reports. So again, as I mentioned in the previous slide, we have dashboard analysis report. There are customer sales reports. And these are all standard reports that are shipped with Sage Intelligence. Uh, inventory and, and the vendor purchase reports that I mentioned earlier that are operationally based. And then, of course, your financial and your consolidated financial reports, including your trend analysis and your GL transaction details reports. So again, all of these reports are reports that are shipped with Sage Intelligence. They can be run immediately. 
uh, they, with your data, and it will display your data real time. And any changes that your data uh, that you make to your data within Sage Intelligence um, can be made and can be viewed again once saved uh, back to Report Manager within Sage Intelligence. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm going to um, share my image here. And let's see, there we go. So what I'm going to do is walk through how to create a basic income statement. And this is using Sage Intelligence, and it's using the Sage Intelligence Report Designer module. So this is uh, a report using Report Designer, and it's also, um, some of you might, might have heard the term Report Designer Add-in. Now the Report Designer Add-in means it's a Report Designer report, and the add-in is this that you see on the right-hand side. You see your list, formulas, and trees, and this is what we're going to be using to create our income statement and our balance sheet. Okay, so what you would do is simply from Report Manager, run out the report, and that's what I've done. We're looking at Microsoft Excel, and again, we're looking at Microsoft Excel with the add-in uh, right on this, uh, on the right-hand side. Now, I've opened it up. These are notes that we've included to enable you to uh, just take a look, and it, it explains where you are, and then also reminds you of the ever-important information of creating and linking, and that means you would uh, link whatever changes you make this report um, you would create it and, uh, excuse me, you would link it back to Sage Intelligence Report Manager because that's a template that you can open later on and see, take it, uh, and view all of the changes that you've made. So this is um, a little reminder. So here I've simply created uh, an income statement, a very simple income statement. Of course, yours will uh, probably include a lot more information than we have in our uh, demo account here, but this is an example of what one uh, that I've created, and I will show you a balance sheet when we get to that as well. And this is really the end, um, the end point that we want to get to. And so let's go ahead and get started to learn how we're going to do this. So again, I've run out the report into Excel, and I have my task pane on the right here. These are tools I'm going to use. These are stage intelligence formulas and tools I'm going to use to create the, balance, uh, the income statement first. So I simply select on uh, my, my sheet one here because I want to create a brand new report. Now what I'm going to do is just simply type in the parameters or the data, if you will, that we're going to, um, the parameters by which we're going to create our income statement. I have the company and the year there. And then from my test pane over here on the right, what I'm going to do is first of all select the formulas. I noticed I have my opening, closing, my actual uh, formulas here. But what I want is I want to start with my company name, and that just drags over the name, and then the current year. And if you take a look, this is uh, a formula for the current year. And um, that is what I'm going to be using to create my report. So it's just the simple drag and drop capability. And then next, I want to pull in my data. So I jump back over here to the test pane, and here I have the list. And you notice you have your accounts, main accounts, budget codes, and then rolls up to account groups and so forth, and it tells you what company you're in. So again, Sage Intelligence can work with multiple companies. In this case, we're just, we're just using one. So I'm going to highlight my main accounts, and then I'm going to drag my main accounts over and simply drop them here into Excel. And you notice that when I drop them into Excel, it gives me all of the headings here, and I'm going to open up the columns like so. For those of you who are not quite familiar with Excel, it's basically I'm highlighting the columns and just dragging open uh, one of them and it, it drags open uh, the rest. Here we go with the main account code. So here we have our main account codes, our description, account category, our groups, our account type, and 
our cash flow type. So those are all the descriptions, and these are, are our actual accounts. Now, for this particular income statement that I have, what I want to do, first of all, is we're doing an income statement, so I want to remove all of my balance sheet rows. So I just simply highlight them, right-click, and select Delete. So now I'm left with um, only my income statement rows. Next, what I want to do is I really don't need all of these columns right now. Some of these columns are useful. Some are uh, for our cash flow statement. I simply highlight, right-click, and delete. Very simple. Now I'm going to keep my account category uh, column just for now because I'm, I'm going to be using uh, that information. Now what I want to do here is I'd like to just put a heading because I want to know what period I'm using. That's my period title and the, um, exact, and, the, and the period with which I'm going to be using for this particular demonstration. Now, in order to pull in uh, the, the correct numbers or pull in the numbers uh, from my ERP that ER I want to report from, what I would do is come over to the task pane here, select formulas. And I'm going to pull my actual formula over like so. So I'm dragging it over and dropping it into the first row here, my first account row, as you can see. And I'm going to make that a little bit larger there by double-clicking on the, the uh, bar, the right-hand side of the bar for the column. And then I'm going to change this to accounting up in the uh, Home tab. In the uh, number for the comma style, it changes it to accounting just so that it'll look a little bit better here. Okay, now, you see that we have the start of a formula here in our formula bar. Now, eventually, when you're all pros, you'll be able to come in here and uh, insert the formula right into the formula bar. But we have provided, of course, uh, the ability to be able to use a graphical um, interface to uh, make it a little bit simpler. Now, this is going to enable us to link the company, the year, and our, our account number to the formula to pull in the exact number that we need. And what I'm about to show you, you can always come down to this help on this function um, button, select it, uh, link, excuse me, and this will give you all of the information that I'm about to go over, and that is what each of the fields are for, which ones are required, uh, and then it will give you a great picture of exactly what we're about to do. So I highly recommend you remembering this link anytime you get stuck. And here are additional links if you need to uh, reach out and get more information. So now we want to get started with the uh, formula here. I'm going to simply highlight this account number, press F4, as my shortcut key to reference this particular cell. Now I'm going to do it three times. Once references the row in the column, twice references uh, the column, and three times references the particular row. And so that's what I want to do because I wanted to go uh, w within this um, column and I wanted to move from row to row. And I'm sorry, we're referencing a particular column. So here next is our year we want to include. And I'm going to hit F4 once because I want it to reference this particular cell this particular year. And for the period, finally, we simply highlight the period, highlight this particular um, cell, but I'm going to hit the F4 key twice. And it's twice because it's going to reference uh, this particular row, but it's going to move from column to column, and you'll see in a minute why that uh, is important. So I'll select OK. And there's the number. This is, is the uh, revenue for this particular account. That is pulled again. Remember, we are connected with our ERP, and it, this is pulling the data in uh, from our ERP for uh, us to be able to create our income statement. So I get the fill button here, double click twice, and it brings in all of my account information. This is all my income statement uh, information that I'm going to be using. Now, you notice that this is a revenue account, and it came in. Um, as negative, but I can add a, a minus sign in front of the formula, and that turns that credit into uh, a positive figure, uh, which is what we need for that particular account. 
this one being returns and allowances is negative. And the rest of the accounts, though, are just fine uh, the way they are. No need to change um, any information from that perspective. Okay, and let's say we want to look at more than just one period. So what I'm doing is I'm going to highlight all of the rows here. I'm going to get the fill button again, and I'm going to drag it out a couple columns and maybe make these bigger so that we can see the numbers. And there we have it. So you have period one, two, and three. And of course, this would uh, equate to uh, the type of whichever period that um, uh, you, uh, you had set. And this is for the particular year and for our particular company. Okay, so pull all of the data that's uh, necessary for um, your particular ERP and for your particular reporting purposes. So now we have all of the information. What we simply need to do is take advantage of our current Excel skills, and we just need to format our report. Now, fear not, I'm going to talk about a few resources at the very end of this presentation and explain to you where you can learn additional information on Excel. And we have guides and videos that will walk you through exactly what I'm doing here. So let's just go ahead and, and uh, do a little uh, formatting. Now let's see, I want to go ahead and insert a row here, let's say, to type in, I'm going to insert a column to drag some of this information over, let's say, and we want to type in our sales, insert a row here. And this will be our sum of our sales. And notice I'm just using simple Excel functionality. I'm going to drag that formula across. Go ahead and do a little formatting on this one. Where's my top border? Right here. <laughs> there we are. Now I want to include the other sales. Now we have our cost of sales. Just simply insert rows here to get some totals. I'll just sum these two. And notice I'm simply coming over here and using the sum button and dragging that number over using a little of our formatting tools like so. I'll do a couple more rows. And just a quick tip, I'm using the Control-Shift button to add rows, control shift plus, all at the same time, and that'll add rows very, very easy for you. And here, I'm going to say, uh, let's see, we're doing the we're doing gross profit, right? Gross profit. And that's, again, I'm grabbing this uh, sum button, and let's go ahead and create this formula here. And drag the formula over again for the rest of the periods. And again, control shift plus, inserts another row. I can add my expenses title. Expenses. And then I want to go all the way to the bottom of this one and summarize my expenses here. And then finally, net profit is one more summary, and that's gross profit minus expenses, and there we have it. We have our balance sheet. One more trick I'm going to show you, though. Let's say, of course, you have a lot more um, rows than I probably do here, but let's say I want to roll all of these up. I simply put my cursor within the formula in the formula bar, and at next to 500, I know it goes to, and I, I type in space, T-O space, 990, press enter, 
and notice this number has changed. So that includes all of these accounts. Right click and delete them so that make sure our balance sheet is still correct. And then continue formatting. And then there we have our uh, income statement. You can continue formatting because of course we always need a, uh, let's see, a um, title. Company income statement. And we want to make sure we bold that, make it bigger. And then uh, let's go ahead and merge and center this. So I'm highlighting all of it, selecting my merge and center button. And if I'd like, maybe just add a little color to it. And then there's your income statement. Of course, you can also hide. If you'd like to hide your parameters here, you can. But remember with Sage Intelligence, you want to type in different uh, period or excuse me, years you can. Notice these numbers change when I type in 2009 or if I go back to 2010, the numbers are dynamic. So that is uh, the Sage Intelligence, um, using Sage Intelligence to create a very basic income statement. Of course, it's very simple. You would just do the exact same thing, but you're you know what, your report, uh, formatting will may be quite different. So lots of different ways to, um, to format your report. And again, at the end of this presentation, I'm going to show you where you can go for additional resources. Now what I want to do is uh, switch gears and let's talk a little bit about how to create a balance sheet. Again, I'm, this is the end uh, result right here. It's um, a very simple balance sheet, but again, I'll show you um, how to create it using Sage, in, Sage Intelligence. And you would simply, again, from Report Manager, you would simply uh, highlight the Report Designer add-in report. This is the one that I have copied. Uh, when you have Report Designer um, added as a module to Sage Intelligence, and you have the Report Designer add-in, you would simply make a copy of this particular report by right-clicking and uh, copying, and then create your own folder, which is very easy to do, and paste this uh, report in. And this is the one where I have an income statement and a balance sheet for ABC Company, and that's what I have, um, I have run out, and that's this report right here. So again, I just created um, an income statement here. And what I want to do is I want to select a new worksheet, like so, because I want to start from scratch and create a very basic uh, balance sheet. So in starting to create a very basic balance sheet, I do the exact same thing as I did with the income statement, type company, uh, current year, and current period. And then I'll just highlight the column and double click here and uh, extend it. And then again, we're going to be using our task pane. And again, this is the report designer add-in task pane. And again, I'm on the same, uh, within the same workbook as before. And I'm simply just going to, going to drag over my company name. I'm going to drag in the current period. And I'm going to also drag in the formula for the current year, like so. So you see the formula is already appearing up here in the top. Next, what I want to do is I want to bring my accounts over, so I need to simply go to my lists. And again, we're in uh, ABC Company. And uh, by the way, I'm on the uh, Sage 100 uh, ERP. However, this works almost identical with Sage um, 300 uh, and other Sage the 500 ERPs. You'll have your test pane. What, uh, there's just a few differences, obviously, in account numbers. Um, uh, from a demo perspective between the 100 and the 500 and the, and the 300. Uh, with the 300 and the 500, there's budgeting and so forth. So Sage Intelligence works relatively the same across uh, ERP. I'm going to drag in now my main account again. I'll open them up again just a little bit so you can see them. Now in doing the balance sheet, what I want to do is I... I don't need these 
too. I don't need the uh, list for um, the account type and the cash flow type because those are for our cash flow. But I do need the account category and the account group, and you'll see why uh, in just a minute. Okay, and next what I want to do is incorporate or insert, I should say, two columns. Okay, and the columns that I want to add are opening balance and year to date closing balance. Just simply type those in. Now I'm going to start on my formula here for my opening balance. Again, I want to change it to accounting. What I want to do is run over here again to our uh, task pane, select formulas, and I want to bring in my opening balance and drag it over quite straightforward here. And again, for those of you who saw within the income statement, we're going to do the same thing here in the balance sheet. You see the formula here, and what we need is to add data between these two quotation marks here, and we're going to do that very easily by selecting this FX button and opening up the function argument screen. Remember, again, if you forget how to do it, there's always help on this function that shows you exactly step-by-step -step how to do it. And again, at the end of this presentation, I'll show you some resources that you can uh, get additional information. So since we're working with our main accounts, I'm going to start with this field up here. I will say, though, if you want to scroll down, if you're working with your account groups and account categories, you, can, you would use these fields as well. We're not, we're working with our account main account, so I'm going to highlight this, press F4 uh, three times because I want it to reference this particular cell, but I want it to move from row to row uh, once uh, the, the, uh, once we, the formula changes from row to row here. I want it to uh, be able to reference all of them. From a year standpoint, though, I'm going to highlight this particular cell, press F4 once, and that's going to reference this particular cell in the row in the column and remain stationary. Okay, and just select OK, and there's our figure there. Next, we want to pull in a, um, or create the formula for our year-to-date closing balance. So let's just drag over our closing balance uh, like so. Change it to accounting. Grab the uh, function argument window and then highlight the account, one, two, three. Highlight the year, one, click of F4, that's the F4 button. Again, on the current period, we want to do one, two, three, we want it to reference this particular period and select OK. Now in order to... Um, Fill in the rest of the rows. We just get the fill button here. This is an Excel functionality. Double click. Oh dear, I'm sorry. I made a mistake on this one. Let's make sure. Yes, here. I made a mistake. You guys probably caught it already. What I need to do with my period is I need to highlight it and press once. F4 once. Select OK. And there's our number. Now, it gave us the number last time, but it didn't give us our other numbers because I didn't tell it to uh, change the formula, uh, um, change the account according to the formula uh, once you filled it in. So there we have it. Okay, now this is all of our data, um, but uh, both balance sheet as well as income statement data. But we're going to use our income statement data, so I'm going to keep it for now. But what I want to do is I want to format. And I'm just going to show you using um, a combination of Sage Intelligence formulas as well as Excel formulas. And I want to um, format our uh, report here. So I'm going to insert a row between our balance sheet data our balance sheet accounts, and our income statement accounts. Now, once I've done that, that enables me to go ahead and sort 
my, my balance sheet data because I'm going to sort first and then we're going to create some totals. Okay, so in order to sort, I, I have uh, selected my main account code heading right here. That's where I have my cursor. And then what I want to do in order to sort is just to go to the data tab in Excel, go to sort. Okay, notice it's highlighting my, all of my rows, just my balance sheet rows. And what I'm going to do, is this is the sort by, it's very simple, and there's just three things. And again, I'm going to show you where there's information that you can do this on your own. And I simply uh, sort by, first of all, the account category. Then I want to add a level, and I want to sort by account group. Okay, and as you remember, these are these two uh, columns right here that I'm adding. Then the level is to sort on a main account code. Okay, so I have all three. I select OK. I make sure that this is checked. Sort anything that looks like a number as a number. Okay, and I select OK. And our sorting is done. Now what we want to do, and again, this is to format our balance sheet, is I want to uh, subtotal. So in order to subtotal, I'm going to highlight all of my headings, all of my rows, like so, and I'm getting all of them. I'm getting my balance sheet rows, and I'm getting my income statement rows, as you can see here. And then once I do that, I stay on the data tab, but I go to subtotal, because that's exactly what we want to do. We want to subtotal. So you'll notice here that what, what I want to do is I want to subtotal first on the account category. So I simply get this drop down, and I select account category. I don't want to count it. I want to sum. And so I select sum. So I have account category sum. And I want to sum the opening balance and the year-to-date closing balance, but not the account group. So just these two items. I want to make sure that I replace all current subtotals. These are my first. And I want the summary below the data. So I select OK. And you can see some of the totals already right here. Now, that's just the first total I want. I have account category. Now I want a total uh, by account group. And you notice over here in the, um, the subtotals pane, I have two levels. I'm going to add one more. I select subtotal again. This time, I want to subtotal on account group. Okay, so I want to see uh, um, these lines totaled. And I want to sum them again. I want to sum opening balance and my year date closing. But I don't want to replace my current subtotals. So unselect that button. Just select OK. And then there we have all of our subtotals. Now, if I run over here to my subtotals pane and click on 2, this is how it should look. This is going to enable you to create your formatting, again, very quickly uh, for your users. Now, I have the grand total here at zero, so that tells me that um, I'm in balance. Let's go ahead and do just a few more things to add to the formatting. All right, so first of all, what I want to do is, uh, let's see, I want to insert I uh, row right here. Okay, I want the um, assets and right here. Control Shift Plus. Sorry, uh -huh. I need to go up one more. Shift Plus. And um, I what I want to do too is incorporate my heading. So I'm going to go home and bold these and capitalize these. So what I want to do is, is simply uh, type in my assets, titles. Actually, again, we're just, we're just formatting. Should we get the bold in, liabilities? Category, okay. And actually what I want um, is the main account. OK, 
Okay, and we don't, obviously we don't put our totals in, but that's why we have the account category so we can take a look at what our titles are going to be. And then from here, I just select the three on the account pane, uh, this, excuse me, the subtotals pane right here, and that opens up our subgroup because what we want to do is, again, just type in descriptions, and you can do this or not do this. This is just a suggestion uh, for you. Let's just say current assets, uh, other assets, property, and, and equipment. I'm going to skip the equity, and I'll show you why in just a minute. And we'll current liabilities and our long-term debt. All right. So in order to include our descriptions here for our equity, simply go to your third panel, and you'll notice if you click on this little plus sign, there they are, so you don't have to type those in. So those are already given to you. Okay, so we have our uh, descriptions for assets and liabilities. Uh, we've got our descriptions for our uh, equity as well. And what we want to do now is just add a row here above our liabilities. I'm going to add a row here above our assets line, excuse me, of our equity line. Okay, now we need to include our income statement accounts, and those are sitting down here waiting to be used. So what I want to do is include a row here again, shift control plus, and we're going to use the Sage Intelligence formula to pull in all of the data from these rows, and we're going to group them, and I know what the row numbers are. They're rows 400, or account numbers, excuse me, 400 to 999. I'm going to just type in 400 space TO space 999, and select enter. I type in my description as I did all the other ones, current year earnings, and I need a formula. Well, they're right here. Let's use Excel to just highlight them and drag them down, and there's the numbers we need. And notice I need to make sure that those match here, and they do with a grand total. But since we have our uh, income statement accounts included twice, what we need to do now is go back and delete our income statement rows down at the bottom here, and that brings our grand total to zero, meaning we do have a balanced balance sheet. Okay, now, that's our balance sheet, but we can do a little bit more to clean it up. Again, uh, whatever... Uh, you choose, but I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hide the grand total. Um, I'm going to get rid of these two headings and uh, let's bold these, make them a little bigger. We have finished using these columns that are brought in initially. We can go ahead and delete those now. You know, we don't have a title. I'm going to say it's uh, ABC Company Balance Sheet. Highlight all of that. Use this Merge and Center button. Love the Merge and Center button. Make this title a little bigger and bold it. And let, let's see. Maybe I'll go ahead and add a little color to this as well. It's a different color. Uh, if I feel like a border. Let's maybe do an outside border, and maybe we can do another border just on it. You know, you can do all kinds of things, so that's to format it. <laughs> you can uh, rename them, rename this sheet here very, very simply to balance sheet. I'm going to have to say um, uh, balance sheet two since I already have one named. Uh, but that's basically what our balance sheet um Sorry, not, not completely, but that's basically what our balance sheet sheet is there. If we go back to two, it'll look identical. There we go. And, of course, again, if you needed to look at different years, you may. 
Notice that when I put in a different year, my numbers change, different periods as well. Uh, you can see some of the year-to-date closing balance change over here. If, you, if you'd rather not, you, you know, make any, um, you, you don't want to see it dynamically, you can simply uh, right-click and hide those. And what I want to do, though, is always, always, if you make any changes to any of your SAGE intelligence reports, go back to the report designer. You want to highlight, this is the report that I have open. So I'm going to highlight that again. Again, I named it Report Designer Add an Income Statement and Balance Sheet for ABC. You want to make the name of it uh, something that you can remember. It's simply right-clicking, select Create, and link the template. It's going to open up the list of all the Excel um, sheet workbooks you have open. I just have one open. I try to make it easy, select OK, and we're going to replace the existing one, and now it's saving it. And voila, it's done. So I simply need to go out, rerun the report, and all of my information uh, will be made available to me, real time, updated, because it's pulling in directly from uh, my Sage um, ERP. And there we are, just as I had it, exactly uh, even what I what I had. Um, highlighted as well. Okay, so as promised, what I want to do, I'm going to go back to and share with you my presentation. Again, because I have some resources for you. And what I can also do is go out to these resources. I believe I have them open. This is sageintelligencecommunity.com. You can also go to sageintelligence.com and find the community. On this uh, community, we have Excel on steroids classes. We have videos and downloads. We have um, tips and tricks for Sage Intelligence, as well as tips and tricks. If you sign up to our Sage Intelligence community, you can get tips and tricks, or you can sign up to our tips and tricks, where we'll send you those in email and and we really do have some good ones that apply to report, creating reports. Um, and I think they're sent weekly. They're very, very good. You can practice them within using the Excel provided within the link. Uh, we also have the YouTube learning channel with lots of videos of how to use stage intelligence. And this, of course, as always, we have very professional instructor-led training classes at SageU on all of our uh, modules within stage intelligence on all of our ERP. Now let me show you if I can open up the window. This is our sageintelligence.com. I wanted to make sure you see that visually so you can remember that sageintelligence.com. Go to community and then from community you simply go to your particular group. There's plenty of places to go, but I'm just going to direct you right now to either the Sage 100, 300, Sage 50. Uh, there's the 500, X3. We have all kinds of um, groups for you. I'm just going to flip into the 100 group right here. Each of the groups, I will say that any of the uh, documentation um, and uh, uh, videos that you see, it, they, it's pr pretty uh, consistent across the ERPs. There's a few changes. They're not drastic. Um, here we have, I'm scrolling down because I wanna, want you to concentrate on the left-hand side. These are all of our links. Okay, information on the report designer added, FAQs, demo videos, user guides. This is more information on um, data or uh, how to use stage intelligence. Um, what I would do is to fast track your financials, select that link. And here's where it opens up another document with many more links as well. So here's where you can uh, learn how to create a basic income statement. You can download the manual. You can watch a video that covers exactly what I've just uh, covered for your income statement and your balance sheet and much more from that particular link. So again, go to sageintelligencecommunity.com, or you can go to sageintelligence.com, find the community, sign up to the community, and you can also sign up for uh, tips and tricks. There's all kinds of audio, uh, videos that you can watch on using Sage Intelligence. 
as well as downloads. Okay, so I'll go back to the presentation and just finish up with contact information. Again, my name is Sandra Smith. I thank you very much for joining us on this webcast. I hope it was a benefit. If you have some questions, please feel free to enter them into the chat box within WebEx here. I'll be happy to answer them uh, through uh, the WebEx. I will be um, closing down the audio portion now. And uh, again, thank you very much for joining. I will be hanging on in WebEx to answer any questions. Thank you, everyone, for joining. We'll see you next time. for you, for those of you who are using it. We also have um, the ability to um, take a look at use, create, run uh, financial and operational reports from our predefined reports that are shipped with Sage Intelligence. So Sage Intelligence can not, not only connect to um, say your Sage ERP, but can also connect to other databases. And our predefined financial and operational reports will enable you to use, take a look at, review, and analyze your data, both from a financial perspective as well as those from, say, purchasing or inventory perspective. And our reports can, uh, we, the stage intelligence is shipped with the connection to your stage ERP. And again, we can build uh, dashboards, balance sheets, income statements. So again, inventory and purchasing information from any of your uh, SAGE ERP data, as well as databases from any of your other uh, applications, as long as they are ODBC, ODBC compliant. And for the most part, most databases are. So that is uh, where SAGE intelligence can enable you to look at your business and analyze your business data from across your entire organization. All right, this is just a, a view. I want to make sure everyone's screens are, are refreshed. This is a view of all of our standard reports. So again, as I mentioned in the previous slide, we have dashboard analysis report. There are customer sales reports, and these are all standard reports that are shipped with Sage Intelligence. Uh, inventory and, and the vendor purchase reports that I mentioned earlier that are operationally based. And then, of course, your financial and your consolidated financial reports, including your trend analysis and your GL transaction details reports. So again, all of these reports are reports that are shipped with Sage Intelligence. They can be run immediately uh, they, with your data, and it will display your data real time and any changes that your data uh, that you make to your data within Sage Intelligence um, can be made and can be viewed again once saved uh, back to report manager within Sage Intelligence. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm going to So thank you, everybody, for joining. We really appreciate you joining our Sage Intelligence webcast. My name is Sandra Smith, and I am the product specialist for Sage Intelligence. And today, we're going to be talking about how to create a basic income statement and balance sheet using Sage Intelligence reporting. So thank you, everyone, for joining. And I do want to let everyone know just a few housekeeping items here that uh, we are recording this session, so you will receive a recording um, at the conclusion of the presentation here. Probably it could be um, either today or tomorrow you'll receive the re recording. And everyone is muted on the line. If you have any questions, please feel free to use the chat pane. I don't, I'm not always able to get to the answers. Um, I'll try to keep an eye on them, but I'm not, not always able to get to them during the presentation. However, I can certainly answer them at the very end of our presentation. I can answer them either one-on-one -on -one through the chat or where I can, I'll answer them during the presentation from a, uh, from a presentation standpoint if, they, uh, if they're uh, directed towards the audience. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and begin. Now, 
what, what I'd like to do is just talk a little bit about what is sage intelligence for those of you on the line that are, that are very new to this. So I want to explain what sage intelligence is, show you a few of our standard reports, and then we're going to get right in to taking a look at how to create a basic income statement and balance sheet using sage intelligence reporting. So sage intelligence really is a single investment for you. Sage Intelligence is a reporting tool that accesses all of your ERP modules and databases, as well as multiple company databases. So it can be a single tool to enable you to uh, be able to create reports both financially as well as operationally, all those operational reports. And we're going to be talking specifically about financial reports today, but you can do either with Sage Intelligence. Sage Intelligence is very easy to do your reporting and your analysis because we use Microsoft Excel as our front end. The Microsoft Excel, of course, is world well known. There's all kinds of information on how to use Microsoft Excel, and most of the globe is using Microsoft Excel for their reporting and analysis use uh, today. So we try to make it as easy as possible. Um, share my image here. There we go. So what I'm going to do is walk through how to create a basic income statement. And this is using Sage Intelligence, and it's using the Sage Intelligence Report Designer module. So this is uh, a report using Report Designer. And it's also, um, some of you might, might have heard the term Report Designer Add-in. Now, the Report Designer Add-in means it's a Report Designer report, and the add-in is this that you see on the right-hand side. You see your lists, formulas, and trees, and this is what we're going to be using to create our income statement and our balance sheet. Okay, so what you would do is simply from Report Manager, run out the report, and that's what I've done. We're looking at Microsoft Excel, and again, we're looking at Microsoft Excel with the add-in uh, right on this uh, on the right-hand side. Now, I've opened it up. These are notes that we've included to enable you to uh, just take a look and it, it explains where you are and then also remind you of the ever-important information of creating and linking. And that means you would uh, link whatever changes you 